Okay, we're recording now. Okay, hello. So welcome to the second day of the 153rd um, meeting of the Internet Society's board. And today we have a pretty packed agenda. We started an hour ago in executive session, and now we are um, resuming in open to observer session. And now we're gonna have a half an hour slot um, where we continue the president and CEO report from yesterday. I think Rinali is gonna be driving that, but I will let Andrew tell us about that. Um, and then we will move again into executive session to discuss um, some part of the of the membership program. But now, Andre or Rinalia directly, the, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, I can just hand over to Rinalia, I think, because um, uh, she can describe just as easily as I can what she's going to do. Excellent. So, Rinalia, please <laughs> go ahead. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Gonzalo. Uh, Kevin, can we have the slide? or the document? Um, not this one, it's actually the PDF of the flowchart, if you have it. Uh, sorry, was that the, the larger? It's, um, if I share my screen, you might be able to see it. It looks like this. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I have that. Um, can you all can, see my screen, though? Yes. Or I can email this to you. Or you can you can share yourself if 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 it's okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, so thank you, Gonzalo, and uh, members of the board. Can you see my notes, or can you just see the the PDF? Uh, just the PDF. Just the. That's okay. Great, okay. So it is a pleasure to be here with all of you and also a pleasure for me to meet the new board members virtually. Some of you are known to me, some of you are not known to me and I look forward to meet you face to face one day if um, the pandemic goes away. I'm here to give you an update on the process for developing the Internet Society's action plan and budget for the year 2021. We expect to deliver the 2021 action plan and budget to the board for approval in November based on this planning process. So a bit of background before I go further. Last year, we established a planning process that is fully integrated with the budget process for the organization. Um, this level of planning didn't exist before in ISOC and the process successfully produced the 2020 action plan, which is currently being implemented with the eight projects at its core. Since last year, there has been some improvements based on learning from doing. Also adjustments needed to be made due to the special circumstances brought about by COVID-19. Some of the things that were planned for projects either could not be implemented as envisioned and projects needed to pivot quite quickly and time was needed to figure out what could be done and what couldn't be done. And also we realized that it would take longer for the projects to produce results because of the special circumstances this year. So here are some of the key differences in this year's process compared to the one that I presented to the board last year. We started the planning process a little later this year, specifically at the beginning of the second quarter instead of the first quarter. This gives project teams time to wrap up their projects from last year and also derive lessons learned, which is something that we value in the organization. For this year, we do not have a staff project proposals phase in the planning process. The senior executive team had decided to maintain the eight projects that we currently have and to do the projects throughout 2021 to give them time to show results. Also, what's different is community consultations, which we have done. So the consultation on action plan would typically focus on seeking community input on proposed projects. Since we have already done this for the eight projects last year, the consultations for this year focused on something a little bit different, getting community input or ideas on project improvements and also ideas on improving collaborations with community. And you have this report in your uh, meeting packet. The results from community consultations are shared with you, and this is based on your request last year when you saw the process from last year. And any input that you have on that as guidance for staff is definitely most welcome. We plan to share the consultation report with community. Also, if adjustments are made to projects based on community input, our plan is to inform community of that as well. 
Um, and finally, to ensure project and functional teams collaborate better for project success, we have made explicit in the process the expectation that the review of community input by project teams should be done in collaboration with functional teams like community engagement, corporate communications, training and e-learning and others. And we have also made explicit the expectation of a collaborative approach to project implementation planning because we've observed that in the past, project planning tended to be done in silos by the project teams first and then the other functional teams input is added on later, which doesn't really set the project up for proper success and we want to address that better moving forward. So the rest of the process is more or less the same with last year's with adjustments mainly for better clarity for staff. And so I'll just stop here to see if you have any questions or input on the process steps. Any questions for Rinaldi at this point? No, Rinaldi, this is great. I think I was one of the ones who provided uh, feedback uh, asking it to be kept in the loop. And I think that the reports in the, in the book, um, I haven't had time to dive all the way into it, but it looks like a really uh, useful um, summary. I'm um, looking forward to, to diving into that and then providing some comments. So th thanks for running the process. Great. Should I stop sharing so that we can see each other um, with yeah, more we questions? Yeah, can do or? that to see okay. if there's more questions. So any, any questions at this point from Rinalia? I, I was mentioning in the chat room, not this one, the other, that, that this, this consultation, we started doing it last year and the whole process and, and Andrew and, and Rinalia have been driving this. And in my opinion, this has been a great improvement. It's, it's a, a really good way to basically build bottom up the action plan, understand what are the important things, not only in, in our opinion, but also in the opinion of staff, community, um, et cetera. So, so I, I think this is actually great stuff, to, to be honest. Um, but maybe the new trustees have some questions or otherwise we continue. Um, okay, so Rinalia, you can go ahead, continue, please. So that's actually all I have uh, in terms okay. of the what's different. If you would like to see the chart again, I can put it up again. Okay. Um, well, I'll give people a few seconds for further questions. Otherwise, um, we can move into the executive session and, and continue with the next slot. Um, uh, George, was that a, a floor request? Yes. Yeah, George, you, you are muted. Yes, thank you. I, I think so. Uh, this all sounds very good. Um, and, and I'm wondering how the community consultation is going to, uh, uh, is going to be done. I note a um, Andrew's comment in the, in the uh, chat, uh, in the, uh, rather in the, whatever it's called, uh, uh, about, uh, uh, people agree in fact we're consulting but they think we're not anyway i think that's worth digging down on and trying to figure out what's going on um in the relationships because it clearly does confuse uh what we hear what the community thinks and what we do and how the community reacts to it thank you so i think george uh, that comment is consistent with the comment that you made yesterday in relation to um what's happening with the community in relation to PIR? Do we know what's going on? Um, have we talked to them about it? And what can we do to improve the situation moving forward? So I take that input to heart and I think we will continue to improve on it. And we can do that certainly with an integrated approach between community engagement and communications moving forward. Um, okay, um, so Richard, thanks for identifying the noise. It was, it's, it's really hot here. So I had a fun actually blowing on my mic. Um, Ted, Ted had identified the noise, but I, I didn't actually understand it. So um, just to be clear, um, I, I think it's, it's good to understand whether when people in the community complain, like let's say Eduardo, for example, if it's about something that we are not doing or if it's about the perception. Because if it's about the perception, I mean, we, we can actually tackle it in a different way. And yesterday we were talking to James and, and all that. If it's something we are not doing, we would need to change it. In this case, in my humble opinion, we are doing, I mean, everything they could ask for because it's, it's, it's really, I mean, this process is, is very actually um, bottom up. We are reaching out to the whole community. So in that sense, I, I think this is a, an important bit of information because I agree with George. If, if there's a perception somewhere that we are not doing something that we are, maybe we have to address that. So, so you know, connecting this with all the PR um, efforts or communication efforts, I think that would be worthwhile. So... And, and I had some floor requests here. Um, Andrew, Andrew, please. Uh, so I, I think that there is uh, something that 
um, it would be helpful in your conversations with colleagues in the community to try to understand, because I simply don't. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, the largest response we ever got uh, in some of these things, um, uh, in some of these consultations was like 30% response rate. Um, this, is, this is supposed to be our community. These are people who signed up for this, right? This isn't like a, uh, a random marketing survey where a 30% response rate would be great. 30% response rate from people who've actually joined your organization is terrible. And that's a, a sign that we have a problem and I don't know what to do about it because the complaint is, you know, you never ask our opinion, but when we ask people's opinion and we're, we're genuinely trying to plumb out what it is that people um, are concerned about, we can't get them to reply. The latest complaint that I've heard, and I have heard this from some people, is that we're consulting too much, which is a weird thing to hear at the same time as you're not consulting with us. And so I don't, I, I literally don't know what to do about this. I mean, it is very, very difficult to be put in the position that you're asking us too much what we think about the things and you never ask us anything. Um, like, um, you know, a sort of different emotional situation than, uh, than, you know, based on sort of reality. Now, you know, some years ago I got divorced and so I have some experience with those sorts of dynamics, but it's not, um, that's not a healthy situation. And, and I just do not know what to do about that because, you know, I think we have, and I think Renalia um, and her team can take a lot of credit for this. We have worked very, very hard uh, to consult widely with the community and, and have uh, worked hard also to make those meaningful consultations. You know, we, uh, uh, on the action plan um, last year, uh, we did it very early. There were several rounds in an effort to, uh, to refine things and so on. This year, we've responded to the COVID situation by saying, well, we're, we're just going to stick with the same buckets, uh, but we're refining it. And, and we're, we're genuinely responsive to those things. We, we really did make responses based on what, on, on, on what people sent us. And we, we made modifications to what we were planning. So I, I kind of don't know what to do about it. And I think that um, uh, fundamentally, you know, it would be helpful uh, to have some, uh, to have some more voices than just staff uh, uh, responding to some of these, um, some of these views within the community, because you know, I, it, I, I think, I don't want to speak for Consuelo, but I know um, I have heard him express frustration on a few occasions uh, where people say, you know, you run everything in secret. And this is, I mean, this board meeting is, is, is not only open, it's broadcast on YouTube. Anybody can watch it anytime. So it's, it's a very strange um, disconnect between, you know, just the objective conditions and what people are saying. And that suggests to me that it's not based on uh, on on something that I can nail down. It's based instead on something. And, and and the last thing I will say is that sometimes when I say, but but we're doing this, the response is, uh, yeah, but five years ago something. And, uh, you know, okay, I, I grant you that maybe something happened five years ago. I, you know, wasn't there. And um, uh, we've had a, a very big change in the organization. I think now all of the trustees have changed in, um, uh, uh, so it, it's, it, it becomes very difficult to know how to respond to that. And I wonder if some of this is, is just that there's a base level of, of sort of complaining um, that is, is the nature of the internet uh, and that we have to accept that some people are not going to be satisfied no matter what. And, and you know, the, the nature of our communications media permit those voices to be extremely loud. So I don't know if that's the case, but it's one working hypothesis that I have because I'm, I'm left without many other options. Thank you. Um, I think Mike wants to talk to that. Mike. Yeah, I just want to add on a little bit to what Andrew says. I mean, uh, Andrew says, you know, and he said it multiple times just now, but that he doesn't understand where this comes from. I think I understand where it comes from, which is that whenever you're disappointed with uh, an organization that you have some affiliation with, uh, it's a natural human tendency to say, well, if I don't know, or if I'm unhappy with the thing that's happened, it must be that they've done something wrong. 
uh, and I just have to figure out what that is, and then I will name the thing that they have done wrong. It's, it's an easy narrative to create. The difficulty uh, that I think that staff responding or that any of us has in responding is that we want to say if what's the evidence that this happened, or sometimes it's what the evidence, what is the evidence that this thing didn't happen, where th this thing is consultation. And nobody likes that conversation because then it feels like they're being challenged and that's not what they want. Uh, so I think that the, and I don't think it's particular to the medium, by the way, I think it happens in people in groups. I mean, I think it's part of human beings acting in groups. We, we all do this, you know, it could be a Cub Scout troop. I mean, honestly, it could be anything. So I think that the, the normal response is not to figure out who to blame for the unhappiness. I think the normal response is just to uh, redouble efforts to stay connected, hope that that works, and recognize that there will be times when it just doesn't work. Uh, so I'm not, I, 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 I'm aware of the efforts that we've done at consultations over time. Um, we can always explore new ways to do that, but I'm not sure that there's anybody to blame for, uh, you know, unhappiness. I think we live in a period where uh, certainly culturally, a lot of people in a lot of different cultures feel the temptation to find someone to point the finger at whenever they're unhappy. And, and I, I, you know, we're living through that period. I'm not happy about it either, but I think we have to be pretty upbeat and positive and focus on outreach anyway, and not be too discouraged when it doesn't work. Thank you, Mike. Th thanks for your thoughts. Um, Richard. I think another way to read this signal is in light of the overarching effort here to, to improve the quality of the communications and the quality of connection with our community here, right? Because the, there, there's not a simple more or less access at play here. The same amount of communication can feel like too much or feel like too little if it's you know not directed at uh, the questions you care about, right? So if, if, I get a, if I get a question about something I don't care about, that feels like the wrong consultation, too little consultation. And if I get repeatedly asked about things I don't care about, that feels like way too much, right? So I, I think there, there's the, the answer to, I think, both of these things lies in the stuff we started talking about yesterday in terms of the overall plan uh, in terms of deepening our connections with, with all of our stakeholders. And, uh, but that's all, all that said, like there, there is an overarching effort and I think this, this fits into that. So I think all of the stuff we're doing in terms of engaging the community, this, uh, this budgeting process is just like another facet of that. Thank you, Richard. And, and I forgot to mention it at the beginning of the meeting today. Today we have Walid with us. Um, so Walid, please. Uh, hello, I'm sorry for not being there yesterday. I had other important things to attend to. Um, I wanted to just reflect on the question that Andrew raised about why is this happening? And maybe the reason could be connected to the individuals, the group, the subset, because I don't think this is uniform throughout the whole community. So maybe getting to the answer would be to look into the group of people who are doing this. And I have my own suspicions is that they may be having ICANN as a baseline. So anything that we do is always automatically connected or compared to ICANN. So once again, we go back and repeat the yep. same thing, the same broken record of we are not uh, similar to ICANN. We are a mission-based organization. We have a board, etc. We cannot co consult on every single thing. Otherwise, what's the board's uh, you know, function? So that might be one way to do it, but it would have to be a, a very long-term uh, thing to work on. Thank you, Walid. Um, any any last questions before we move into executive session? Okay, thank you. So if someone is watching this live, um, let me check. So um, we're gonna be back into open of to observer session in around one hour. So yes, that's it. Okay, so if, if you are following this live, uh, we will be back in, in around one hour. Um, Kevin, please. Uh, yes, I was just gonna suggest we remain at this link rather than um, close the session and reopen another one. Um, we don't have any uh, other observers other than 
uh, Christine Sessiger, who's online as an attendee. She's with our chapters. So, so if you could promote whoever needs to be promoted and then lock the, the room, that would be perfect. And stop the recording, by the way. Okay. Oh, sorry, she's left. So <laughs> okay. I'll uh, pause the recording and... Okay, we're recording now. Okay, thank you, Kevin. So we are back from our executive session and our break. And now we are exactly at point number 20 on the agenda. And now we're going to be passing a few resolutions. As usual, we appoint um, people, we, we form the committees and we appoint people to them during the AGM. Um, so we have a few resolutions ready. The first thing we're going to do is to appoint um, someone to the ITF Trust for a period of two years. And the proposed resolutions is to, uh, is to appoint uh, John Levine to the ITF Trust for two years. Any comments on that? Okay, I, I need someone to move. So moved. Ted, mo Ted moves and, and Olga seconds. Okay, and I will, uh, we will pass this resolution by show of hands as usual. Yes, no, abstain. Uh, who votes yes? No votes? Abstain? Okay, the resolution passes unanimously. Thank you all. Thank you, John. Um, okay, point number 21. This is actually the, the appointment of people to, to the committees. And, um, and we will have several resolutions. And, and here, for those of you checking the agenda, we have them in um, alphabetical orders. So we will start with the audit committee. Um, and, and you have also the proposal for the, for the membership in these committees on your you know, book, so you can get there. So the proposal is to have Heather chair the audit committee with Maimuna and Mike as members. Any comments on that? Okay, so we will be passing this by show of hands. Again, yes, no, and abstention. Yes, you votes? Don't you have to move yeah, it? Yeah. You need to move. Yeah, so who moves? Uh, Pepper moves. Um, Walid seconds. Yeah, sorry about that. I was <laughs> jumping ahead of myself. <laughs> um, okay, so yes, votes. Please raise your hands. No votes, abstentions. The resolution passes unanimously. The next one is to appoint the chair and members of the CEO succession planning committee. And the proposal is that Mike is the chair with Gonzalo, Laura, Pepper, and Richard as the members. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be, um, reading the ex officio members in the committees because then it, it gets a bit complicated. Um, any comments on that? Okay, I need someone to move. Ted moves, Richard seconds. So yes votes, please raise your hands. Okay, um, no votes, abstentions. Okay, um, the resolution passes unanimously. For a second, I thought Richard was gonna raise his sandwich, so. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to, to the compensation committee. The proposal for the compensation committee um, is to have um, Gonzalo as the chair. That's ex officio because he's, he's the chair of the board, the same as, as the chair of that committee. And then having Heather, Mike, Ted, and Walid as the members. Any comments on that? Um, who moves? Okay, Olga moves, uh, Maimuna seconds. Yes, votes, please raise your hands. Um, no votes, abstentions. The resolution passes unanimously. Um, okay, let me check here. The next one is the elections committee. And in the elections committee, we, we appoint only the chair of the committee um, at the AGM. But in any case, we also gather volunteers. So the chair of the, the proposal is to, to have Maimuna chair the elections committee. And, and that's the resolution we will pass. And then we will inform Maimuna that within the board, actually, um, Laura is also interested in serving. 
So when we put together the committee, um, Maimuna, please make a note that, you know, Laura is, is actually volunteering. Uh, but anyway, at this point, as I said, uh, we are only appointing Maimuna to chair this committee. Any comments? No. Okay, uh, who moves? Uh, George moves, um, Pepper seconds. Uh, yes votes, please raise your hand. No votes, uh, abstentions. The resolution passes also unanimously. Um, the next committee is the executive committee. So the executive committee, as, as you all know, we changed, changed it a, a few years ago, so we don't effectively use it. It's only there in case at some point we need to make a, a speedy decision, which we haven't done in the last you know, two, three years since we made the change. But anyway, the membership of the executive committee is basically the president, the treasurer, the secretary, the secretary, and the chair of the board. Um, so any comments on that? Okay, so who moves? Uh, Ted moves, um, Walid seconds. Uh, yes votes, please raise your hand. No votes. Um, abstentions. Okay, so the resolution passes unanimously as well. And now we go with the finance committee. The finance committee, the proposal is to have um, um, Richard as the treasurer. The treasurer is, is ex officio the, the chair of this committee. And to have as members George, Gonzalo, Laura, Olga, Pepper, and Ted. Um, any comments on that? Okay, who moves? George moves, Mike seconds. And um, yes, votes, please raise your hands. Mm, no votes. Abstentions. Um, the resolution passes unanimously as well. That was the finance committee. Now we go to the governance committee. And um, the governance committee, let me check this. Um, the proposal is to have John chair that committee and have as members George, Heather, Maimuna, and Pepper. Any comments on that? Okay, who moves? Uh, Mike moves, all the seconds. Uh, yes votes, please raise your hand. No votes, abstentions. Uh, the resolution passes unanimously. Okay. Um, okay, now we are going with the NOMCOM, the Nominations Committee. And the Nominations Committee is, is the same as the, with the Elections Committee. We only appoint the, the chair at this point. And the proposal is to have um, the nominations committee, uh, George, uh, as the chair. And, and that's the formal resolution we will pass today, but then we will inform George as well that Mike, Olga, Richard, and Walid, they have also volunteered to be in the NOMCOM. So when we put the NOMCOM together, we usually get also people from the community. Um, those were the, the trustees who volunteered to be there as well. Uh, but anyway, today we appoint George as, as the chair of that committee. Any comments? Okay, who moves? Okay, uh, Laura moves, Heather seconds. Um, yes votes, please raise your hand. No votes, abstentions. The resolution passes unanimously. Um, okay. And um, finally, the last committee we are forming today is the PIR nominations committee and the PIR Nominations Committee. Um, the proposal is to have Ted as chair and then John, Laura, and Olga as members. Any, any comments on that? Okay, um, who moves? Uh, I see Heather moves and Maimuna seconds. Yes votes, please raise your hand. No votes, abstentions. Uh, the resolution passes also unanim unanimously. Excellent. So, so that was um, all the, the committees we needed to appoint today. We will also be appointing uh, people to the foundation program co committee, but that will be done in the, in the foundation meeting we will have after this. So these are all the committees of the ISOC board, actually. Um, thanks. So we move on to the next point on the agenda, which is point number 22, which basically um, we, we started doing this like 
I don't know, two years ago or something like that, uh, we just passed a resolution with the, with the dates and locations for our board meetings during the year. Uh, we all know that, you know, there's a, a high level of uncertainty given the pandemic and all that, but I mean, we will have to play by ear when we are um, closer to the dates. Um, but just to be clear, this is the dates for 2021. So it's, it's not a natural board cycle, it's a natural year, 21. Um, starting, well, the, the proposal, I will read it here, starting with uh, March 2021, which would be the, the Q1 meeting to meet in, in Cancun in Mexico. So the idea there is to recover some of the costs that we lost because some, last time we had to cancel and we couldn't go there. And that's within the basically one and a half years or something like that we got as, as the time to return there. So that's the proposal. Then the AGM would happen in, in uh, well, 31st of July and 1st of August in San Francisco. So the dates would be very similar to what we are doing this. So this is um, one year from now, effectively. And that would be co-located with the summer ITF. <laughs> Um, then the retreat would be uh, 11th and 12th of September in Washington, D.C. And that will give um, new trustees, well, new trustees, yeah, because there will be the you guys, new trustees, and the new trustees in 2021, the opportunity to go to the ISOC office and meet, you know, staff there, because that's actually our bigger office. Some of us will be already off the board at that point, um, but I think, you know, it will be very good to do that. So the proposal is to have the um, retreat there. And then the Q4 meeting would be in November in Madrid, Spain. And that would be co-located with the ITF. The idea was to co-locate this AGM with the ITF in Madrid. It was moved to November 2021. So the idea is to co-locate it there. That's the proposal. Any, any comments? Um, OK. Uh, let me pass this, and then someone was asking me something. Um, any comments? No. OK. Seeing none, um, who moves? I see George moves, Mike seconds. Um, yes votes, raise your hand, please. Okay, no votes, abstentions. Okay, the resolution passes unanimously. Um, okay, so there was a point being made on the, okay, on the, on the room. So to talk about the 2020 Q1, Q4 meeting. So the, the 2020 Q4 meeting, as you guys know, it's, um, it's supposed to be co-located with the ITF in, in Bangkok, in Thailand. And so far we haven't canceled that. The ITF hasn't made a decision either. Um, as I said, I mean, it's, it's uncertain. Um, my, my personal opinion here, it, it, it's completely irrelevant. We will see what happens in, in a few months. Maybe we will go, maybe we won't, um, who knows. But then anyway, the Gonzalo, you, were... Gonzalo, you won't have to wait a few months. They plan to make a go no decision at the end of August. So it's much faster than that. Okay, excellent. So that's the current plan. Excellent. So they will make a plan. Um, I mean, and to be clear, it's not that we have to make exactly the same decision as the ITF, but, uh, but anyway, it's, it's a good data point to see if they are going or not. And our, our um, plan was to meet there November 20, 21st and 22nd, which if I'm not mistaken is after the IETF meeting. Um, and if we don't go there, the, the meeting, the Q4 meeting will be similar to this one. And just to remind everyone, the Q4 meeting is especially important because this is when we approve the budgets and all that. So usually it's, um, you know, I mean, there's, there's like important stuff to review and, and to make decisions on. Any more questions on, on meeting dates or locations? Okay, good. Um, actually, as you can imagine, even the, the Mexico meeting in March, it's, I mean, we don't know what will happen, but anyway, this is kind of, let's pencil this in uh, into our calendars and then we will, as I said, play by ear. So this brings us to the end of the um, official agenda. So let's move into AOB. Any other business from anyone? Um, Olga, please. Yeah, thank you, Gonzalo. I just sent you and an Mike an email just to start a, a very informal exchange of ideas. I know you're in vacation, but just didn't, didn't want to forget about that. And uh, because Andrew asked some interesting questions about how to organize and work with staff in relation with the the new working group we are starting to. Yeah. To so Olga, uh, can can we discuss that? Can we discuss that in a minute? 
Let, let's do that. Yeah. I thought it was uh, AOB. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's AOB, but I, I think it's better since we haven't, you know, well, sent the official uh, announcement. You, uh, you, you broke up, Olga. But anyway, we, let's discuss this in two minutes. Okay. Um, any any further AOB <laughs> from someone? Um, okay. So with this, I, I move to adjourn. John, do you second that? <laughs> Pepper seconds that. <laughs> so the meeting is closed. Thank you. <laughs> As you know, perfectly well, motions to adjourn.